Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the feature race at Woodbine on Sunday. Race number eight is the $100,000 Glorious Song Stakes. Let's take a look at this field of two-year-old fillies going seven furlongs on the tapita surface, and really the morning line tells the story. The number four, Grace and Dignity, is a deserved two to five. She has raced twice in her career. She has never been headed. She has won those races by a combined 10 and three-quarter lengths, and she just destroyed those horses. And this is as close to a slam dunk on paper as it gets. I think she's the goods. Uh, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier. I'm, I'm curious if they get through this race, and the, the plan that you had laid out makes all the sense in the world. Think Woodbine Oaks, think maybe potentially try to stretch her out down the road for a race like the Queen's Plate. You think Shorter is going to be better? I don't disagree with that. I, I look at her and go, she's just way the horse to beat. The interesting thing is, from a buyer standpoint, she lays over the field. From a time form standpoint, she's not that much faster than everybody else. But boy, from a buyer standpoint, she does have a big advantage. She's got that big pedigree to go longer. Yeah. She's by Animal Kingdom. When you look at her, she's just like a little jackrabbit, though. She didn't break very well in her first start against winners last month, but she just assumed the lead in a matter yeah. of strides, took a little bit of pace seat, and once they hit the turn, she just scooted away, and Eureka Rosa de Silva never asked her for any run. And when you look at the time form U.S. pace projector as she stretches out to seven furlongs for the first time, we see her on the lead in a race which might favor horses on or near the early lead. Boy, the advantages just continue to grow. She, she ticks all the boxes. Yeah, this is one of those races where I feel like unless you are really interested in trying to take a shot against her, you're better off watching and, and seeing if this potentially could turn into a, a star. Now, the second choice on the morning line is the number five, Win the War. She's four to one. She cost $700,000 as a yearling. She's by Warfront, so there was no surprise mm -hmm. when she made her debut on the turf for Mark Cassie. And she came from off as the favorite to get the job done in a manner of a horse that's still learning the game. Now, they're going to try to get some black type switching to the synth. I'm not worried about the seven furlongs. I'm just not sure she's ready for grace and dignity. Yeah, I agree with you. I kind of look at it from a pace standpoint, too, and say if she's going to be coming from off of it, boy, not only are you spotting you know, some sort of an issue as far as the pace is concerned, but you're spotting it to the best horse in the race when you got to run down. I don't think it works. The number six, Madame X, has done a lot of traveling for a two-year-old. Maryland, New York, mm -hmm. Kentucky. Now up to Canada. Just throw that last race out to Jessamine. She was 88 to 1 against Rushing Fall, who came back to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. The prior race at Laurel Rock Solid. Stakes placed in the Salima, but a 54 buyer speed figure just isn't going to do it. No, and that's the thing. I mean, really, it comes down to a matter of if you're a figure player, these other girls need to improve by so much. The, the, the margin between the favorite and everybody else is, if we're talking 25, 30 points. They need to improve by so much, and she needs to have a, some sort of major regression. I just have a hard time seeing it. Perfection Cat added Lasix for her turf debut most recently. She went right to the front, and she beat three minor next out winners. But I think all that does is make Grace and Dignity look mm -hmm. better, because Grace and Dignity beat a Lasix less Perfection Cat two starts back over the surface. I suppose the only sort of positive spin, she's already proven at a distance longer than 7-8, she gets a slight turn back here. If for some reason Grace and Dignity can't see out seven, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, we know that Perfection Cat can. Two longest shots on the board. The two-star Hunter is a maiden who just showed some runaway speed mm -hmm. last time out at a mile and a sixteenth and is probably on the chase here. An Enchanted Tail who came from just off the pace at 30 to 1 to be $20,000 maiden claimers. Tall order for both. Short field, I think the connections would be thrilled black to get type some black type. Nice. Let's take a look at our picks for the glorious song. In case you haven't figured Shocking. it out already. Yeah, shocking. We're going to go with uh, Grace and Dignity. Matt's going to try to get the old 4 5 home. 45. I'm going to go 41. All right. Try to get Perfection Cat second time Lasix in to the exact in the glorious song stakes. If you are betting the Woodbine Sunday card from home, no better way than DRF bets. $300 sign up bonus available when you use the promo code FALL300 at the site drf.com forward slash. Fall. Approximate post time for the glorious song. Race number eight at Woodbine on Sunday, 4.38 Eastern. Best of luck.